Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available in both the public and private sector. And we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world. We'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home. This is Military Mom Talk Radio and here are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. And, Robin, we've got a great show today because we're going to bring on an author, uh, Susan Sokolblosser, who wrote this great book, uh, Letting Go. It it was really meaningful to me because, you know, Rob, (laughs) you were the one who told me I had to learn to let go. (laughs) You know I wasn't going to let that slide. I know. I know we've had. But, you know, I think we've had both of us and many people have had this conversation with a lot of people. Um, I think when you work so hard and you have um, the highest um, uh, intention of of making the very best, whatever your product is, whether you are uh, creating something from scratch, whether you have a bakery, whether you have – no matter what you have, you are doing this with the the highest integrity. So for you to assume that someone else is going to have that same integrity, that's really tough. Because um, you're looking at a standard that maybe not everybody might have as as much passion for. So I I can very much appreciate the letting go issue. (laughs) Well, you know, and it's... Oh, <laughs> um, it's funny when you, we talk about letting go because I had a completely different take on the um, oh, Susan Some- Sokoblosser's <laughs> online because she's in Oregon and that's the train that goes near her house. So um, we're going to give that train credit. Just I'm so sorry. <laughs> it just always comes around <laughs> noon, around this time. <laughs> it's oh, waiting it's for, the, for your program, Sandra, to come by. Oh, is it the Amtrak or the Metrolink or some sort of uh, freight train? What is it? Because we were going to give it a freight train. Okay, we'd like to thank the freight train for showing up today on today's show. We will be visiting <laughs> with Susan Sokolblather. She's the author of a wonderful book called Letting Go. And, you know, for those of you that are just joining us this season uh, for our 2 million downloads every month and we're growing, um, you know, Rob, I have to put that in every show. Absolutely. Um, but the the reason that Susan is brought on the show today is her book is about letting go. And the military family especially, Rob, has some specific conditions about letting go. I mean, there's a couple things at play here that I want to uh, bring up to talk about, you know, like why we have Susan on the show, not just because she's a great lady and she's written a great book, but more importantly, uh, we have to learn to let go. And nobody teaches us how to do that. And you have military parents, Rob, who have to let go of their 18, mm-hmm. 19, 20, 25 year old, let them go to boot camp, let them go overseas. I mean, that's some big ass letting go. I mean, that's a serious uh, letting go. But you also have spouses, and our spouses can be 18, 19 years old, letting their husbands or their wives go, or their boyfriends and girlfriends, mm-hmm. they have to let them go. And then we have the typical letting go things, which we've beat to death on this show about the new normal. People have to move, we have to relocate, we have to change things there's so much letting go uh, with respect to the military family and Rob when I had to go through my letting go tutorial that's what I'm calling the cluster (laughs) cluster chicken what that hit my life a couple years ago I had to let go of my property I had to let go of my marriage I had to let go of my children I had to let go of my mom I had to let go of my dogs there were so many things letting go and you were wonderful at that time Rob when I asked what could I do like what do I need to know Rob to improve myself and you said Stan you got to work on letting go and it was so interesting to me Rob that you brought that up because I didn't know 
how to let go. Everybody yeah. would say, hey, you got to let go of that. Hey, you got to let go of that. Hey, you got to let go. Your mom's gone. Hey, you got to let go. Your dog's gone. Hey, you got to let go. Your kids are now 50-50 between two households. They have another mother. So you got to let go of being their mother. And, you know, oh, my God, I almost had a stroke. Absolutely. And none of us, you're right, are programmed for that because we are the ones who take pride in what we have done. So why shouldn't we hold that dear to us? And I think finding the way to still hold dear in the pride that we have done our job well, that that is now able to exist in a new generation and it could be that quote unquote new generation can be in many forms. Um, but I, I, I'm so anxious to talk to Susan about all of her process, uh, because I'm sure that's going to transcend into, uh, so many other realms as well. Well, and I really want to talk with Susan today, and I'm so glad that she's here opening segment, because how do you let go? Like, what does that even mean? Like, I really, I still, when somebody says, like, how do you let go? Like, I I don't even know where to begin to start. Susan, I'm Mm going to put the mic over to you and go, you're an author of a book called Letting Go. Where do you start? How do you start letting go? What does it look like? What does it taste like? Well, there's no easy answer. I mean, it's, there's no silver bullet, and I think what you've been saying is so relevant. Our whole culture is geared towards accumulation. You know, you go to school to get education. You want you uh, friends and networks and financial well-being, and all the buzz is about more, 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 and nobody talks about letting go so kudos to you for confronting this head on and in my case what brought this to to a head for me was that I had run my business developed my business and run it it was a vineyard and a winery um, and I'd been president of it uh, for 17 years and decided that I really It was time for me to turn it over to my children, to the second generation. And I thought it would be an easy process, just give them a little, you know, tutor them a little bit and then turn turn it over. And what I found was that it was an emotional roller coaster. And what I learned was that anything that is important to you is really difficult to let go. You know, even though you can say to yourself, I've been so lucky to have this and that that's what I should emphasize rather than the letting go part of it, the fact that you let go, whether it's voluntary, in other words, for me, this was voluntary. I kept asking myself, why is this so hard? I wanted to do this. Or if it's involuntary, in other words, you have to let go of, a mother who dies or a spouse who dies, you can say, you know, as I said, how lucky you were to have had the experience of being with this person, but you inevitably go through a grieving process. And I had somebody say to me that, you know, I've got one word for you, you know, why you're depressed and all this, and she said, grief. And I thought, grief? What does that have to do with letting go of a business? But Mm. it really was a grieving process and was just something I had to work through and come out on the other end. But the good news is when you do get through it, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And if you don't let go, you're not going to find it. When I finally let go... I felt so liberated, and the whole world opened up to me. So let me stop there and let you respond. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think there's two kind. obviously there's two scenarios because sometimes things happen suddenly, obviously in the death of somebody or something was just immediately taken away. But let's focus on your situation, Susan, because this was voluntary. And I think there's two different... um, ways of looking at it because I think every business has some succession planning built in. We know that we want to take a vacation so so so-and-so needs to learn how to run the payroll or 
we need to make sure that we are ready for the auditors and somebody else might have to step in and and know how to do that because I I went and and had surgery or whatever. But when you're getting prepared to make a final exit um where do you did you feel that it was a slow step to help everybody know the elements that you were responsible for or did you kind of sit back and say you know what here's the crux of the matter and it's your business you can take your spin on it and and make it your own I I guess that's a difficult decision well I have a few things to say about that um and actually, it's hard to know where to start. The, I, we may have to do. We may have to do it after the break. But for for the first two minutes before break, let's get, at least get started. Okay. On it. Well, just interrupt me because I'll just yeah. <laughs> keep going when it's time to break. <laughs> so the first thing I want to say is that it's important to get help. I had a business coach that I could go to who could help me advise, help advise me. And what I learned was that in family businesses, at any rate, parents usually don't give up control. And an, an intentional transition, which is what ours was called in family business lingo, is relatively rare. And the usual thing is that parents don't hand over control. They just take longer and longer vacations but they still hold on to the reins. I felt that it was really important for my kids to feel in their gut the responsibility for the business, the weight of the business. And for them to feel that, they had to have the responsibility, which meant I had to give it up. Mm -hmm. So there was no question in my mind that it was more a matter of, giving them total control. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if I did that, who would I be? I would no longer be the important person that I mm -hmm. had been as president. Right. But you were their inspiration. And maybe that's, <laughs> that's one of the best things that of all we are talking today with Susan Sokol Blosser. She is the author of Letting Go, uh, an issue we are always struggling with. And not only women, I think everybody faces this. So uh, we are delighted that she's with us. Do stay tuned after the break. We have lots more on Military Mom Talk Radio. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Have you ever wondered if you're normal? Or why you feel distant from your partner? Then join us for Sex Talk with Lou with your host, Lou Paget on TogiNet Wednesday nights, 9, 8 central. Do you want to recreate a truly connected relationship or wonder, how do I tell my kids about things? Join Lou Paget, one of the world's best-selling authors in the field of sexuality, a certified sex educator and sought-after expert for all media and her renowned expert guests as they discuss anything and everything about sex that impacts our lives and our families' lives. For more on Lou, check out her website, loupaget.com. This is the show where the best experts in the field of sexuality and sexual health can finally give you the answer to that question. Join us for Sex Talk with Lou with your host, Lou Paget, Wednesday nights at 9, 8 central on toginet.com. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in every Monday night during the debut episode of Paranoia Texas at 8 p.m. central, 9 p.m. eastern. And you will get a chance to win some very cool prizes from McDonald's, Walmart, Geek World, Red Petal Salon, and so much more. All you have to do is listen for the cue, and when you hear this music, call in. That's every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, and win those cool prizes. 
Secret Cuisines and Sacred Rituals is a quest, a place, and a feast. Join host Vilasi Venkatachalam every week to explore myths, mystique, old medicine, and brilliant modern solutions through a dazzling kaleidoscope of cuisines, cultures, and cures. This is the place where tribes gather, strangers and familiars, to be memory keepers and makers of our evolving, enduring, evergreen, spoken legacy of wisdom and ingenuity. In Velocity's words, when we do old things in new ways and new things in old ways, we paint with an inspired palette, weave our own healing traditions, and become our own guru. Velocity is a troubadour of secret cuisines and sacred rituals. She collects stories of wisdom, in ingenuity and grit. She believes wellness and transformation happen when you stand at the threshold of delight and discovery. She displays her hidden penchant for drama when she leads the safari at the supper club. Her favorite pastime is to extol the marvels of cuisines, cultures and cures to her audience in workplaces, seminars and salons. Her mantra is be your own guru. She is a biochemist, botanist and alchemist who likes to churn delightful, useful things from a brew of art and science, ancient and evolving, old medicine and new cures. Join Velocity every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, only here on the Woo. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help the sound, put your name at the top of his list and a statue of liberty started shaking. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and God, you got to love commercial editing. You know, we're sitting there listening to Velocity's, you know, thing about, like, she's a botanist, and it's cuisine, so it's like, I put a boot in your ass. I mean, yes. <laughs> that's why you do live radio, between the train and that, Rob, that's why we're here today. We love coming back from commercial break, because we're so happy to get back to the discussion, that's why. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that and the editing. Um, well, my name is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and this is Military Mom Talk Radio. And for those of you that have missed the first half of this, oh, actually, we're only in the quarter part of the show. I know. Um, I know. I know I'm going from rote memory. You want to check us out on iTunes. You want to check us out on MilitaryMomTalkRadio.com. You also want to check us out on Global Broadcasting Network Station, TogiNet.com, because you can hear this and hundreds, hundreds of hours of family-friendly military programming. You're not going to want to miss this. We're visiting today with Susan Sokol Blosser. That's S-O-K-O-L Blosser. You can check out her website by the same name, SusanSokolBlosser.com. She's the author of a a book called Letting Go. And the reason that she's on the show today is because we are investigating, we're talking about the process of letting go. Because when trauma happens, when lifestyle changes happen, when deployments happen, when redeployments or reintegrations happen, everybody's got to adjust and we have to let go of the old normal and uh, embrace the new normal. And, you know, we've talked a lot in the show over the years, Rob, about this new normal. We got to recognize the new normal. But part of recognizing a new normal is letting go of the old normal. And the process of letting go is something that's really hard to define. It's something that people say easily. Oh, you got to learn to let go. Oh, you got to let this go. Oh, you got to let this go. Well, what does that mean? What does that look like? You know, for me, Rob, and then I'm going to ask you, Rob, and then we're going to go to Susan. The process for me of letting go was, first of all, identifying that I needed to let it go. Like, it's really hard to let something that's, go that you don't know, you yeah, know. That's that tough. Yeah, and you were really good, Rob, in helping me. I think I sent you an email at one point and said, Rob, what do you think I need to do to help myself? And, you know, you said, well, Sam, you know, you really need to start letting some of this go. And so I sat down and made a list at that time and said, well, what does letting go mean? And mm -hmm. some of the things I identified was that 
I was going to stop talking about it. Like I was just not going to bring it up. And when I would think about it, I would just put it going, well, that's in the past. I can't change it. You know, that's happened. I just have to deal with it, but I'm not going to stress over it. I had to kind of do some self-talk and some identifying of what letting go meant for me. And the other thing with letting go, and this sounds like a little goofy, but I decided that when the thoughts and stuff came up, I was just going to cry them out. Mm -hmm. And it was a really weird thing. Like I didn't realize how stuffing down the feelings, but yet talking about it in an intellectual manner kept me stuck Mm -hmm. because I could rationalize it away, talk about it, but the feelings were still there. And I think I had to feel those feelings till they ran out of juice. Yeah. And, and it's true because it isn't just intellectual. It is emotional. We wouldn't have brought whatever to the peak that it is if we didn't have a lot of emotion built into it, sweat and tears. I mean, that's, that's the heart of it. I I think for, for me, letting go is identify. I almost have to pull myself away and look at the situation saying, it's one thing if you, you yourself have a goal, I have another job, therefore I need to let go of something else. Um, I had a little bit of that transition. Uh, you and I, I've, I've taken on, um, uh, another career in addition to what you and I do. And some of those things I had to let go, but I had to look at the overall picture. What was better for, um, the, the, it, clients, what is better for the end result. And in some cases, what's better for the business customer that I am um, leaving to go on to another job? Is it better for me to stay on in some way or is it better for me to let go and put my efforts into my new endeavor? Having to do that, you have to have confidence that you have either trained or left in a good enough position that somebody else can now take it on and do what they want. Um, and let's turn over to Susan and just say, we were kind of alluding to that at the beginning when we were going out to break, is talking about how do you prepare that severance, that exit strategy. Oh. That's you, Susan. <laughs> Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh, and that was so good, Rob. That was so good. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Well, well I'm going to segue go on ahead. to that. Yeah, go ahead. Because go ahead. There's a difference between voluntary and involuntary yeah, letting absolutely. go. Absolutely. It's interesting because what you talked about was fairly voluntarily. Like yes. we can choose to, to take a different job. We can choose to yes. get rid of or acquire a new client. But when it comes to death or deployments or illness, those are like involuntary, yeah. uh, those are involuntary adjustments. Thanks, oh, great. Casey. Thanks, Casey. Yeah. Uh, involuntary letting go. Susan, what we talked about, um, while we got you back was the difference between voluntary letting go and involuntary letting go. And you've experienced both of those, uh, with respect to your book, you've gone through a divorce, you've turned over your company. Um, you've had, you know, experiences with, with, you know, death and and loss that were beyond your control or illness. Um, how is it different between voluntary and involuntary in your experience? Oh, gosh, that's really an interesting question. I, I'm i not sure that there really is a difference. Um, it seems to me that, you know, I, I hadn't thought about it that way before, but there's a grieving process for both. Mm. You've, you've lost something either way that you're not going to regain, and the... The key variable is that is I think what the Buddhists call clinging, and that's the source of unhappiness. You cling to something that you think you can't live without, and whether it's a parent or a child or food, you know, mm-hmm. people cling to food. Um, It's still giving it up. It still involves the same process, whether it's taken from you or you willingly give it up. Does that make sense? 
that I agree. I think, sense. yeah, yeah, that that's the same process. And I was thinking maybe that it's the unfairness or the surprise that comes with the un- involuntary that makes it so like, oh, like, you know, when it's involuntary, it's not your choice. And sometimes when you have a choice, there's a little bit of preparing that goes into it, or at least you're aware of it. You're not just bonked on the head, you know, with some of these involuntary um choices well yes you know if it's involuntary there's going to be anger you know why did this happen to me um kind of thing whereas if it's voluntary you have only yourself to blame i mean that was a question i kept asking myself is why am i having so much trouble with this i wanted to do it this is my decision and even during the middle of it where we had a what we call the practice year, where my kids were um, making the decisions, but I was still president in name. I hadn't turned it over to them. Um, If they had said to me, Mom, we don't want to do this. We want you to stay president, I wouldn't have been happy. That isn't what I wanted. I wanted to let go. I was just having trouble doing it. That's what was so ironic to me and was one of the reasons I wrote the book is that I thought, you know, I want people to know how difficult it is that you are afraid, you're taking risks, you're doing something where you don't know what the outcome is, but it's worth it because at the end it's liberating and you can go on and live your life and do things that you never thought you'd be doing, which is what happened to me. Hmm. So interesting. And, and unfortunately, we have another break coming up in just about one minute. Was the book cathartic for you or had you already processed everything and this was um, now your way of passing it on to others? Oh, no, it was very cathartic. I needed to write to make sense of it and to try to understand why it was so difficult. And that was sort of the prize for me in writing it was to go deeper and deeper and deeper, Mm -hmm. sort of peeling away the layers of an onion to get Mm -hmm. at the heart of what was it that made it so difficult for me. Mm. And I can answer that after the break. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's a great teaser. The teas, yes. uh, We definitely want you to visit Susan's uh, website. It's uh, Susan Sokol Blosser, B L O S S E R. So Susan Sokol is S O K O L B L O S S E R. ER.com. And um, so much about this book and a lot about um, Susan, about her history and how she came to be the successful person she is. We'll be back in a moment. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. This is God in Country, the collision of faith and politics, hosted by nationally known speaker, Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener. Not your typical Rev. Dr. Sean is a proud military veteran, former law enforcement officer and founder of the internationally regarded Executive Protection Team. Dr. Sean holds a bachelor's degree in biblical counseling and master's and doctorate degrees in theology and is currently pursuing a doctorate in ministry with a Hebrew worldview focus. Through his counseling, elite life coaching, and national speaking, this ninja pastor tells it like it is. This series is biblically and politically engaged with the pedal to the metal. Join host and author of the acclaimed yet controversial book, Excellence Killed the Church, How Mediocrity is Destroying America, Dr. Sean Michael Greener, every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on this radio network. This is the Toginet Radio Network, radio with a cutting edge. 
Are you fascinated by the stories behind the stories, the people behind their masks, the truth about people's failures and redemptions in both their business and personal lives? Then Off the Record Secrets of with host Judy Schreiner is for you. It's people's secrets that make them interesting, but very few folks are willing to reveal them unless they trust that their information will be treated with accuracy, fairness, and respect. People have been entrusting their secrets to longtime business journalist Judy Schreiner for the last 25 years, and now she's bringing her expertise and impressive contact list. Tune in and call in as host Judy Schreiner talks to guests off the record as they reveal new secrets each Tuesday at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. There ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. And I don't know what to do, Rob. I already did my half-hour break thing at the (laughs) quarter hour. (laughs) It never hurts to repeat it. We're proud of all of our elements out there. So We are. We're so proud of our downloads. We're at over 2 million downloads uh, each month. So we want to thank you guys for listening. We want to thank you guys for coming to iTunes and looking us up. Um, You know, we get like four or 5,000 people that come to iTunes just to find our show. So for those of you listening today, if you haven't been to iTunes, uh, go to iTunes, type in Military Mom Talk Radio, and you will see hundreds of hours of family-friendly programming, everything from experts on post-traumatic stress to uh, wounded warriors to uh, ideas for parenting and deployment and redeployment. We've got a lot of shows with Dr. Jody Bramer, who is out of Camp Pendleton, and uh, she always gives us great things to think about. But today, we're talking with Susan So. Blosser. You can look her up at Susan Sokol, S-O-K-O-L, Blosser.com. She's the author of a book called Letting Go. And as we uh, know, uh, the military family is all about letting go. We have to let go of our kids, our spouses, our friends. We move. We let go of commissaries and, and playgrounds and, you know, friends that we love. And, you know, we have to move around the world so many times. Um, one of the things I want to talk about in this segment is to identify what is your role. Now, this helped me a lot. Uh, Susan talks about it in her book, uh, Rob. And basically, you know, when I was going through my letting go uh, tutorial process uh, (laughs) called life, um, I had to really sit down and go, okay, why am I really tweaked about this? Like, you know, part of it in the letting go was that I was trying to control things that, I should, I had no business controlling, you know, when I thought about like, you know, especially with my divorce, like I had to let go of the concept of being married forever, of growing old with this person, of, you know, the, uh, the thoughts and ideas that I had about marriage. And I never thought of myself as a divorced person, didn't come from a divorced family. I had no frame of reference. So I was like, Oh my God. And then I thought, well, okay, 60% of, you know, marriages end in divorce. So Stan, you know, what is your role really in this? And I'm like, is my role the martyr? Is my role the wounded person? Or is my role the person that just has to go, okay, well, acknowledge that this isn't it anymore. Grieve it, feel it, let it go. And then realize that you can't control what other people think. There's a lot of shame for me in, in this going, like, what would people think of me? Like, ooh, you know. And then I realized, like, this is crazy thinking. And And I really had to think about my thinking in order to let go. So I'm going to go to Susan first. Susan, how did you change your thinking and your thought process and your, how you looked at control and what was your role with respect to your experience in, in, in your book? Well, for one thing, Sandra, I was boss and that I was also mom, which is, sort of uh, common in family businesses, but my primary role, my primary commitment as a business person was boss, and yet I had to decide which hat I was wearing when I was relating to my kids, 
um, because boss is very different than mom. Um, I see mom as very supportive, and I see boss as more demanding. Now, that's a little oversimplified because you want, as boss, you want to be supportive too, um, but at any rate, those would be the basic basic differences. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I found that role really changed at, at the point that I passed the baton, so to speak, and they became actually co-presidents. Two of my kids became co-presidents of the business. I immediately changed how I looked at them. And I was much more, I was suddenly much more motherly and much more supportive because I was no longer responsible for their behavior in the business. And it also meant that they made decisions that I may not agree, have agreed with. And that was... I think the hardest part for me was giving up control, that once I came to terms with that, that this was going to be, they were responsible for the business, and I would have input on a large policy basis as part of the family board, but not on a day-to-day -day basis with day-to-day -day decisions, which is where most of the business takes place. Um, coming to terms with that was huge. And what I was left with was I'd been really important, and suddenly I wasn't. Who was I? What hat was I wearing for myself? And that was really the issue that I had to face. If I was not president, which is how I identified myself in the outer world, I was head of a business, if I wasn't that, who was I? What was I going to do? So that was the big question to me, and what made it made me realize that I had spent my life working on my what I came to call my outer persona, my public personality, to the point where I needed to look inside and find out who was I. When I what you know, who was I that continued? When I wasn't president, who was I? What is it that I really wanted to do um, now that I could do anything? And that was a big that was a big deal. And that's part of why I ended up writing was trying to make sense of all that. And it really took me back to my childhood. I mean, things that I'd been encouraged to do and things that I hadn't been encouraged to do that made me the person that I was. Did it help you, Susan, that you did have something that you had to focus on after you left your business, or was there still that period of, of not having that identity? Well, that's a good question, and everybody asked me when they heard that I was going to step back, well, what are you going to do? You know, that's the obvious question. If you're mm -hmm. not doing what you're doing, what are you going to do? But what I learned was that that was the wrong question, that the right question was, how are you going to let go? And are you able to let go? Because what I ended up doing was things that I never would have imagined while I was president. And... What I realized when I finally did let go, and which is a process, it isn't something that just happens. And I think space makes a difference. One of the things that, that helped me was, and I think I look at this as the universe stepping in and giving me a swift kick to help me move forward, I broke my ankle. So it literally was a swift kick, and <laughs> it was done in the nicest way, in a familial setting, and with caring people. But what it meant was I also was not, I was on a business trip, so I wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't totally easy. 
But what it meant was that I could no longer go to the office. I had to work from home. And that separation gave my kids the opportunity to come into their own and not have everybody look to me or for them to look to me. Um, and, and it was a very healthy thing that happened. It's what made all the difference, really, for me. It just moved me forward. So what I learned after I finally did let go was that I had been spending so much of my emotional energy thinking about the business that I hadn't allowed myself, I hadn't allowed my imagination to soar, so to speak. And it wasn't until I let go that, as I said before, the world opened up to me and I realized I could do almost anything. And I ran for office, for example. I never would have imagined that I would run for the state legislature um, while I was president of Sokol Blosser Winery. And I didn't win, but the journey was I learned so much and had such momentum that it gave me the opportunity to start a nonprofit to work on community issues that interested me in my county. And that's what I've been doing when I'm not writing. I have been working on childhood education and music enrichment and community history and women leader development, and I've been having a great time. I never would have imagined while I was a business person that this is what I would be doing in a few years. So that's why I say the question, you need to, have, you need to take a leap of faith. You need to have faith that if you take the risk and you do what you need to do, that there will be a pot of gold at the end, a reward for you internally to be fulfilled. Wow. And do you, we've got one minute before the break, do you ever get a call from the office, that your former office, once in a blue moon? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. They come to me from time to time. And as I yeah. say, I'm on the board, the family board, which oversees them. Um, and I do public relations for the winery. I oh, tell wonderful. them, I'll come in and do cameo appearances for you. Oh, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> We're talking today with Susan Sokol Blosser. What a delight and what an honor we are having today to be able to discuss this with her, all about letting go, about her experiences of letting go, and about the wonderful opportunities that once one has let go can find on the other side. And on the other side of this break, we've got one more segment with Susan. Stay tuned. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Are you looking for something more in your life or business? More success? More stability? More happiness? It's all out there waiting for you. But it doesn't just happen. You've got to go get it. Make it happen with Michelle McCullough, where motivation and strategy intersect. Michelle is a serial entrepreneur, acclaimed speaker, and the WooHoo Radio Network's resident business and success strategist. Michelle has the smarts, strategies, and experience to help you improve your life and take your business to the next level. You've got big dreams. You've got big vision. Now it's time for you to make it happen. This is the Toginet Radio Network, broadcasting quality programming to the world. 
Are you ready to start rocking that woo-hoo that only you do? Because Lisa Stedman is on a mission. She will dare you, challenge you, enlighten you, provoke and empower you to bring out that inner woo-hoo. Lisa is an internationally acclaimed best-selling author. She is a breakup expert, a brand consultant, CEO of Woohoo Inc. and the Woohoo Radio Network. She will show you how to take your boo-hoo and turn it into woo-hoo. Get rebellious and get real. Get your dreams off the back burner. Get inspired and motivated to take action. Start rocking that woohoo that only you do in love, life, and business. She is going to be here for you every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Only here on the Woohoo Radio Network. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name at the top of his list and a statue of liberty started shaking. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we are visiting with Susan Sokol Blosser. That's S-O-K-O-L, Blosser. You can find her at SusanSokolBlosser.com. She has this wonderful book available at Powell's, which is uh, – letting go and it's a uh, easy read it's um fun to read it's very very much like you're sitting down with susan and listening to her stories and we know as women that we all learn best uh through stories and experiential sharing which is you know kind of like what we're doing today now susan i have a good question for you because i like to put people on the spot on the show that's what i do um <laughs> you have experienced some different types of letting go um, letting go with your divorce after a long term marriage, letting go mm-hmm. with your company, and then also letting go of what sounds like your former identity in order to build a new identity or a new self concept. I, I hope I'm accurately portraying um, that correctly. Uh, what was the hardest part? You know, whether it was, you know, the different scenarios or you personally, what was what? What was the part you struggled with the most? Oh, gosh. Um, It was all hard. (laughs) That's not much of an answer. But I think, you know, I have said many times that the hardest thing I did in running my business was letting go of it. That... And that was emotionally. It wasn't a difficult decision to make in my head. It was, that was relatively easy. It was difficult to accept it in my heart. And even though I wanted to. So I think that was the most difficult. You know, my mother died. I knew she was going to die. She'd lived a wonderful long life. It was very sad, but I understood that. I didn't understand why it was so hard for me to let go uh, of my of control. And it made me realize, okay, I'll say it. I'm a control freak. Um, control was important to me. That was the way to... I guess um, that may be based on fear. You know, we, if we can, we keep the fear at bay, if we can control what goes on around us. You know, that was one of the things that I had to face about myself. Um, but control is one of the things that make people great. I know control gets a bad rap, and we've talked before about, you know, I'm a quality control freak. I'm not a control freak. I mean, some of the very things that made you very successful in your life, like what made me very successful in my life, Susan, is that I I control what I can. You know, I control the yes. quality. I, I work really hard to ensure that everything I put out is, is the best I can do at the time. I won't say it's perfect, um, and I do make mistakes. 
mistakes, but, but my diligence to that is like my downfall. Yes. Isn't that interesting how much of, much of life is a double-edged sword that mm-hmm. what makes you successful is also, can also be what makes life difficult, can be a challenge. I think you're absolutely right on that. That certainly was the case for me. What about you, Rob? What do you think? Sorry, I, I, I'm here. <laughs> what I was going to say is I think so many times there are, how many times have, has a wife left for the day and the husband was so proud that he he did the laundry and he folded the dish, the, the towels and put them away, but we all say, oh, but, you know, they, they should be folded this way instead of that way. And I think once we have the confidence that the towel is going to work, whether it's folded <laughs> the long way and down or the halfway and, and rolled, I mean, I think it will survive. And I think once we are able to realize that it's not um, – that there are more than one ways to get to that success, that therefore someone else's um, taking the reins is probably going to be easier. I also think too, as and as I was saying before, you kind of had the purpose, new purpose, not long after you had a lot of other uh, things that you wanted to do. And Sandra, I think of our, our guest that we had not long ago, Judy Brizendine, who uh, turned her um, loss into a, a great support for others, and she found an awful lot of purpose. So that was her letting go after she lost um, her loved one and then was able to turn it around. I, I think that focus on the next thing, it, it it's it's just has to happen because you do grieve and you have to let yourself grieve, but you have to realize that there will be something f- in in your future, and I think that's where you found your new success, Susan, is by being able to know that the the business will go on. They have integrity. They have a passion, and um, that that you have a new purpose. Oh, that's such good good advice. The what I always thought in my business, which was full of challenges, was our motto was crisis is opportunity. And <laughs> that, I think, sort of sums up what you're saying as well. Um, when I lost the election that I thought I was going to win um, for state representative, I, it was such a blow to my ego because – I was clearly such a better candidate than the person who won um, (laughs) that I had to really look and say, okay, um, so my ego is bruised, but I had a lot of great support, and I became so engaged in the community, and what do I do with this momentum? And that was, for me, you know, I knew I could, sort of crawl off in a corner and lick my wounds or I could build on the momentum and I chose to build and that was it was a good example of crisis was opportunity and um, I took the momentum that I had and was able to get a lot of support for founding this little nonprofit that I have that uh, where we're actually doing things and accomplishing things and making our community better. And it's very fulfilling. It is. Yeah. Looking ahead. And I think, isn't that hard that that's probably the, the, the turning point and the, the hardest thing of all is looking ahead and not looking back. Have they done anything? Has your family done anything differently that you would never have done? Well, yes, my kids were, much more into expanding than mm-hmm. I was. Um, and they have done bigger and better things at the winery. And they've done a great job. So I'm very pleased. I may may not have done it that way, but I'm really proud of what they have done. They've That's made it wonderful. their own. Good. That's wonderful. 
and and therefore, I'm sure once it it evolves a little bit more, and you're seeing their success, that letting go probably is is now very much in the in the past. Do you yes. still have a pang, or do you really feel that it's that it's um, it is theirs now? No, it is theirs, and I I am so glad. I feel like I went through quite a dark tunnel, but I came out to the light on the other side. Hmm. I was, yeah, I'm trying to think if I felt like it was a dark tunnel. I felt it was more like a Mr. Toad's wild ride water slide in a dark tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> well, well right. You place. had, you, yeah. it was more than a double whammy for you. <laughs> Yeah, what did Judy Brizantine call it? Compounded grief, you know, because there are some people, you know, who have situations, you know, we called a bad luck schlep rock in the 70s. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's, you know, it does seem to come in clusters for some people. You can have an illness in the family, then you have a, an unrelated death, and then you have a deployment, and then you have a kid who runs away, you know, or you have all of the above. So I guess I want to give permission uh, to everybody listening today with respect to letting go to honor that we don't know how to let go. It's not like there's lots of books out there. I mean, I love that she titled it letting go because, you know, it's an easy, easy concept to remember an easy book to find, but letting go is a skill. And unfortunately, especially in our culture, letting go in our, you know, the general religious backgrounds that are taught here in the United States, letting go isn't taught. It's not something you learn. It's like something that everybody seems to smash into and then tries to figure it out as they go along until somebody, you know, starts to write about it, talk about it, speak about it, which is why I'm so glad um, that Susan is here today with us. Susan, what's your best piece of advice for people who are, going through the process of letting go. What's your best advice for people today? I think acknowledge that it's difficult. Acknowledge what you're going through, that you have a choice of how you're going to react. And you can be depressed forever or you can move on. It's your choice. I love that. I, I've got to say what your your subtitle is to your book, How One Entrepreneur Energized Her Business, Empowered the Next Generation, and Embraced a Bold New Vision. Um, right there, you are, you're not just turning things over. You have trained. You have, have empowered the next generation so that there was that succession plan. There was learning. There was passion that was passed along. And now uh, you are on to a whole new track and a whole new vision and what's next in your life. So uh, we just have about a minute. Do you have uh, another another book on the way or do you have something else in store for Susan Sokol Blosser? Well, I do. I am thinking about another book. I've really enjoyed writing and I'm not quite sure what form it's going to take but um in the meantime i will probably blog on my website so stay That's tuned wonderful. we're going to have everybody go to susan sokol blosser s-o-k-o-l-b-l-o-s-s-e-r for all uh it, this in incredible energized information so thank you susan for being our guest today with sandra beck this is robin boyd we're so glad you were with us Come back next week. We've got another great guest.